Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to talk about the five worst sports cars out there. And with the trends of modern society, they're selling less and less sports cars. Now since they don't sell so many sports cars, many manufacturers that still make sports cars, they put their high level of technology in them. Things that often break rather quickly. They may be fast cars, but they break down fast too. You don't want to buy one where the value depreciates like a stone plummeting down Niagara Falls or one that breaks down all the time. Now one sports car not to buy is the Maserati Gran Turismo. A new one will cost you about $133,000 and immediately it'll be worth about $80,000 when you drive it off a lot. It has a Ferrari built flat crank V8 engine. It's fast. There's no arguing that. And you can get a used one pretty cheaply if you look around. But that's because they cost a fortune to maintain and they break down as they age. Now don't believe a bunch of crap that you get from other people on the internet. Because as with any sports car, especially the high-end ones, you get false praise all the time because the guys that are reviewing them, half the time, hey, they were flown to Italy to road test the things. And of course they're gonna say glowingly, oh, best car ever drove, handled, la la la. These guys aren't buying them. They're not paying to fix them. <laughs> they're just having fun tooling around in them. And in this respect, you certainly can't believe most of the owners because they spent all that money. They don't want to admit to you that they bought an endless money pit. So they'll tell you it's a great vehicle. But in the real world, <laughs> no they aren't. The more exotic a car, generally the more problems you're going to have. I mean, Maserati's been on the verge of bankruptcy for decades. They don't make enough cars. And years ago when they partnered with Chrysler and they were kind of piles of junk and they fell apart. They can't mass produce cheaper cars and their fancy sports cars, they just don't hold up. The next money pit sports car not to buy is the Mercedes SL450. You get a base one, it's about $90,000. In about five years, you can kiss goodbye about $55,000. I mean, if you really have to have one, hey, lease the stupid thing. You know how much money it'll cost to lease it? Then you get rid of it and don't have to pay for repairs. But if you buy one, be prepared to lose a whole bunch of money just in the loss of value itself. And then some people think, oh, you get one of those AMG SLs, the fancy ones, and they won't lose money as much. Uh -huh. <laughs> they lose money at the same exact rate. The resale values are exactly the same as the non-AMG. Yeah, the AMG ones are fancier, they go faster and stuff, and of course you pay more money for them, but they depreciate just as badly. Engine oil leaks, head gasket leaks. They're not like those old solid German cars you could buy decades ago that would run forever with very little maintenance. These things are maintenance pigs, and they break before their time. Take most things you see on the internet or even in print with a grain of salt when they talk about it because Mercedes spends a lot of money advertising. Supposed car talk guys don't really know that much about cars or they're dishonest. They'll say how great vehicles are because they're not buying them. They're not paying to fix them. They're just driving the new ones around. And hey, most brand new cars work pretty good <laughs> when they're brand new. And being a sports car, of course, they only sell a limited amount and put the modern high tech that often breaks in them. And they sold even less sports cars than regular cars and SUVs. There aren't that many of them out there. So there's always a market for people that are gonna buy really expensive cars, rich people. Now the next sports car not to buy is a Chevy Camaro. Certainly not in the stratosphere like the previous two cars. In two years, they pretty much depreciate about 45% in value. I'm telling you they're not great made vehicles. When you look at the sales alone, Ford sells a ton more Mustangs than Chevy does Camaro. They don't make all that many of them, and they're a GM product. Quality is certainly not number one at that company. Steering column wiring goes out, they get early coolant leaks that if you don't watch, you're gonna blow your engine. The quality just isn't there, and for the money they're asking, don't buy one. A ZL1 Camaro starts at $62,000. It was one thing when I was a kid, and you bought a brand new Camaro, and the thing cost like $3,500, and it had a solid engine, you get a standard transmission, and their V8s lasted quite some time, but they were only $3,000. If I was forking out over 60 grand for a car, let me tell you, one of the last things on my mind would be to spend it on a GM Camaro product. They just cost too much money 
for what you're gonna get. When I was young, all the kids in high school wanted to have one, right? What, what high school kids got $64,000 to throw on, on a car these days? None in my neighborhood. Now the next sports car not to buy is the Tesla Model S. Yeah, we're going into electric cars now. But it's a true sports car. That thing is super fast. It's much faster than even a Dodge Challenger with a Hellcat engine with 700 something horsepower. Now aside from problems of recharging electric cars, I'm not going to talk about that here. The thing is, these things have very little resale value. A customer of mine decided he wanted to get one. So he sold his fancy Lexus to another customer of mine and he bought a brand new Model S that the original price was $124,000. He bought it from the original owner and it only had 15,000 miles on it. He paid 45 grand, so it went from $124,000 to $45,000 in only 15,000 miles. And electric motors in themselves are simple, but the setup that they have, the integrated drive unit on those things, have burnt out in quite a few of them early and they had to replace them some of them more than once they can do all the pr in the world that they want but if they're not holding up guess where that shows up in a resale value and these have really bad resale value it's a cool looking car and it's electric so all the techie guys want to get something like that but we've got the quandary of any sports car. They've been making the Model S since 2012, so they've been making them for eight years. And they're averaging about 20 something thousand a year that they're selling. So this isn't a mass, mass produced car that they're gonna sell millions of. So of course, Tesla can't base their existence on a Model S. That's why they're pushing the Model 3. But now that they're going to be making them in China, the price will probably come down somewhat. They can make a whole bunch more of them on an actual assembly line instead of in tents in their parking lot in the United States. So the Model S, yeah, it's a sports car. It goes real fast, costs a whole bunch of money, but it depreciates fast. And that's probably one reason that Toyota really doesn't make any sports cars. They make their money making SUVs, cars, and pickup trucks. The Toyota 86, their little sports car, it's not even a Toyota. It's made by Subaru in a Subaru factory and put a Toyota emblem on it. Sharp looking car, but hey, they didn't have to build anybody. Subaru makes it. The new Toyota Supra. That's just a BMW Roadster made in a BMW factory. That's nothing to do with Toyota really other than they put Toyota emblems on them. The Supra recently had a recall for bad welds. Well, who made the recall? BMW had to make the recall because they're the ones who built the vehicle. And the law is whoever builds a vehicle has to put the recall out. So even though you bought a Toyota Supra, the recall was done by BMW. <laughs> Personally, I think Toyota's watering down their name doing such things, but at least, hey, they're not spending a whole bunch of money on research and development to make a sports car that, hey, they're not going to sell that many of them anyways. Stick to SUVs and cars and pickup trucks. Now, the last sports car not to buy is the Jaguar F-Type. Yeah, Jaguar. Beautiful looking cars, no arguing that. And they're zippy cars, no arguing that either. But they're also cars that fall apart before their time. Jaguar, which is now known as Jaguar Land Rover, it's one company. First they got bought by the Indians at Tata. The Indians gave it a try, but it wasn't working out too well with them. They were losing billions. <laughs> So Jaguar Land Rover is half owned by the Chinese. But sadly, the quality control still is continuing to go downward. Recently, a couple of months ago, Chinese citizens who had bought these things went and protested in front of the headquarters of Jaguar about how poor the quality of these things are. And when you get people in a communist country going and protesting in public especially china about jaguars that really tells you something about the lack of quality in these cars and it kind of also shows you how insane our world is becoming that now the british luxury car company is half owned by communist china the communist chinese are complaining about how there's such poor quality in these luxury jaguar cars <laughs> jaguars have historically cars are very expensive to maintain that's just the way that they are. And their resale value is in the real world. Don't believe half of the values that you get in books or in dealers that are selling used cars. And certainly pay no attention to any of those websites that say, oh, they're showing you, yes, you got a good deal. Here's the best price on this car. It is just a bunch of made up 
nonsense to try to sell you stuff at much more money than it's worth. I mean, me, I kind of had hope for Jaguar. The Chinese bought half of it. I thought, hey, maybe the Chinese will make the quality go up. Well, I guess it's a cursed company because if the Chinese are protesting in China how poor quality the Jaguars are, I guess there's no hope for the company in the long run. A lot of the experts were even saying, hey, if they were smart, they would just drop the Jaguar line entirely, don't make any of those at all, and just concentrate on the Land Rover because Land Rovers are extremely popular worldwide. They have a lot of problems too. They can be endless money pits and their resale values are garbage, but for some insane reason in the United States, it's become like the yuppie mobile to drive to drive around in one of these Range Rovers. That's certainly a big change in society, but as society changes, looks like Jaguar just didn't follow with the changes. They're still making undependable cars that break down and have horrible resale value. Decades and decades they keep making the same mistakes. So now you know five sports cars that you shouldn't waste your money on if you value your money and peace of mind. Hey, if your friend's nuts enough to buy one, buy him a tank of gas and let him drive it around with you for a while and have some fun. But don't throw your own money into one. <laughs> So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.